you know, I once applied for a job, went through all the interview rounds, did a project and was told at the end that I was too creative. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the profession. Is there a hot topic more hot than generative AI right now? I don't think so. As the technology evolves with lightning speed, so do the discussions and opinions around it. Every creative industry is gearing up for its own moment of reckoning and fashion is no exception. As I record this, only a few days ago, the business of fashion released a podcast and accompanying article about how generative AI could reshape fashion. So for the big question, will AI take our fashion design jobs? My answer, yes, yes, it probably will. And it will probably be for the best. You might notice me looking slightly different in certain frames and the flowers in the background have definitely changed. It's because I needed to do some additional footage. I reshot this video three times already and it still didn't feel right. I'm afraid by the time I upload this video, some of my ideas might be outdated. Of course, this topic is so dynamic. There's something new coming up every single day, but also it awakens so many connected discussions which I hope to be able to expand on in future videos. This video turned out a bit longer than I originally anticipated and I give quite a bit of context at the beginning. If you prefer to skip directly to the fashion stuff, I will put the timestamp below. On the 30th of September 2022, mere days after Daniel Lee was announced as the new creative director of Burberry, Nick Knight and Show Studio published a video by AI image maker Arthur Chance. The caption boldly proclaimed that they had asked AI to predict what Daniel Lee's first collection for Burberry would look like before he had even designed it. As an attempt at telling the future, we now know the AI's effort failed. But since this was actually intended as a thought experiment, a provocation, well, let's think about it. If you're unfamiliar with Nick Knight, you can probably ask ChatGPT for his career highlights, unless it's down. But for our purposes, we can say that he's an incredibly influential British photographer and image maker who has pioneered the adoption of digital technology in the creation of fashion imagery, not least through the show studio platform, which he created in 2000. To really understand how groundbreaking and forward thinking he is, you can check out the screenshot of Apple's official website in 2000. YouTube was not even created until 2005. Meanwhile, this man is setting up a digital home for fashion film. But back to 2023 and the machines maybe taking over. This most recent tech craze truly started when OpenAI introduced DALI to the world and there was no escaping the flurry of AI generated images in the style of any number of the old masters, answering increasingly more ridiculous prompts and raising the question, are these good enough to rival the talents of a human? I happen to be lucky enough to call the super talented illustrator Rosalina Burkova my best friend, so I could have her professional first-hand impressions. Currently, generative AI works with hundreds of thousands of references, and this will probably very soon become millions. It can access a greater catalog than any human would ever possess, consisting of the totality of the entire human recorded experience. It can emulate every designer, every art style. It understands your words in a way that allow it to create new original images and not just replicate existing ones, but it still creates novel content from a prompt, working within its specific data set of existing references. And as broad as those may be, at least for the time being, AI is relatively limited stylistically. The art critic Jerry Salt summarizes this perfectly in his review of the MoMA installation and supervised by Rafik Anadol. He calls it a glorified lava lamp and points out that a problem it shares with other AI programs that use existing written, photographic and artistic material for their creations is that it's derivative and familiar and struggles to transcend its source material. By the way, if you don't already follow Jerry Saltz on Instagram or Twitter, you should start making better life choices. AI has an understanding of what each word represents. What it lacks though, as YouTube channel Design Theory explains perfectly in the video Will Artificial Intelligence and Human Creativity, is a concept of context, of space and the mechanics of our world. Design Theory gives the example of telling a human to go inside a house. A person would know to find the door, turn the doorknob and walk inside. The AI would need to be trained what a door is, what a doorknob is, and what turning the doorknob means. It does not have a concept of what being inside is. But if we look back at the context of creativity, I think the deeper reason for this lack of transcendence that Jerry Salt is speaking about might be in the bigger issue my friend Rosalina pointed out. AI does not understand metaphor. 
So for the AI to create clever illustrations, for example, it still needs to be stirred by a human. Maybe that human's skills would shift, but people would still essentially be using their creativity to express ideas. In fact, my friend Ross has been fascinated by the creative potential of AI for animation. From what I gather, it's actually quite complicated to create video using AI and requires very specific prompts where the smallest data point can lead to unexpected results. But with that, it is creatively challenging and exciting. It's sort of like learning a new language or let's say training a dog maybe. <laughs> you need to put in so much very specific information and get so good at how you prompt the AI in order to get anywhere near controllable or predictable results. And sometimes the creative excitement comes from chance and error. Yes, it speeds things up once you get to something good, but getting there is not as easy as one, two, or one and zero in this case. So how about fashion? Well, as with most topics I pick to unpick, I think the show studio video that I spoke about at the start raises deeper questions about what working as a fashion designer means nowadays and where it might be going. The Danny O'Lee for Burberry prediction merges interpretations of familiar Burberry codes like the tartan and the trench, manipulated to reflect the signatures we have come to recognize in Lee's work. If what an AI can do is pull a range of references and bring them together more or less successfully, how does it differ from what a fashion designer does? The real reason that provoked me to record these interjections is actually an episode of the podcast No Mercy No Malice that a friend sent me this morning. It talks about the structural decline of the mining industry in the UK in the 80s and draws a parallel between that and the current Hollywood writers' strike in the age of the streaming services. I would argue that the exact same principle of a structural decline is applicable to the fashion industry in the age of fast fashion and big business. Nowadays, success is measured in profitability, not artistic integrity and you can decide for yourself whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I know plenty of people in the fashion industry that fall on either side of that argument. Creating a collection is a process and what I find sad perhaps is that the creative part of that process is becoming more and more repetitive and if humans are spending the majority of their time creating easily reproducible work well then what is the point? We often hear that there's nothing new, there are no new ideas. One of my favorite YouTube fashion channels, Fashion Lover 4, recently published a video talking about this idea of fashion designers actually designing new things versus styling existing pieces in a new way. At the speed at which most fashion brands work nowadays, there is so little time left for experimentation, for pushing forward new ideas, pulling vintage references together, maybe running them through a merchandising lens, not really looking to reinvent anything is an all too familiar job spec for many. Mark Bain, the BOF tech correspondent, rightfully points out that we romanticize creativity. But in reality for many, working in the real world, the banality of taking an existing silhouette and changing the fabrics, as Bain puts it, is routine. If we took a cold, hard, honest look in the mirror, would we have to admit that to a large degree, a fashion designer's job has become rehashing old references in a novel way? Well, not really, because in a certain sense, it has always been that. Beyond pure inspiration, a collection is also a mix of material references brought to the designers by a wide array of suppliers. Somewhat in that chain of thought, the analog world is not immune from the pitfalls of using the same design reference. A brand I worked for created an incredibly beautiful lace with a super, super high-end mill for one of my favorite collections we worked on together, only to discover after the show that the vendor had sold a remarkably similar lace sample in almost identical colors to a competitor a season prior. The overlap was completely unintentional on the designer's side and AI had nothing to do with it. Maybe had there been a specialist generative AI software that could create novel and intricate lace patterns and even set up the weaving program, or is it knitting for lace? Who knows where contemporary lace making could be? <laughs> At the end of the day, perhaps it is impossible to completely avoid the familiar. As fashion is in some ways finite because it is always defined by the boundaries of the body. Even the most avant-garde creations still envelop, hold on to, relate to, or in some way decorate the body, so the starting reference point does not fundamentally shift. Collecting references, shapes, colors, materials, ideas, and mixing them together, blowing up the volumes or shrinking down the proportions, always in the search for the most original and unexpected approach. It's just that machines have enabled the shift in what this essentially means, and even more so, 
and how it can be done. When an ex-colleague of mine started working at the J.W. Anderson studio some years ago, she was a little shocked to discover that designers almost exclusively used Photoshop to create designs by manipulating volumes, putting together colors and textures. She'd never worked in that way before. What could only be done through sketches or physical samples being draped around the body in the past could now be filtered on a screen before going into further stages of development with less time and resources wasted on ideas bound to be cancelled once visualized. Yes, it took some getting used to, but she's absolutely thriving as a creative. Another thing John Moriello from Design Theory talks about is how AI would allow a designer to explore more risky ideas because I don't have to spend hours on a concept that might not end up being worth pursuing. I find this very interesting because decorative art is a lot more result focused than fine art is. This is a topic I would love to explore deeper in another video, but I guess in short, the common wisdom in fine art is that the journey is its own reward, right? It's about the exploration, the process, the discovery. I'm not saying no one cares about the process in a fashion studio, but well, really the process usually sucks and you just hope that the reward of the end result will erase all the pain you've gone through. <laughs> when you're fighting your impossible deadlines, the creative ideal goes out the window anyway. And AI tools could be a godsend. For example, a company called Viscom AI have a product that allows you to create high quality renders from a sketch in mere seconds. But what I want to know is where was this tool when at one of my old jobs I was forced to update the collection overview multiple times a day when a single tiny detail would change? Or you know, how would something like this change the life of a design intern that spends hours coloring and recoloring Photoshop renders? I will link below a video by Ashe Creates where he demonstrates how this and other popular AI softwares could be used in practice to create multiple design needs quickly. Machines have already helped us reduce the technical time required by so many design tasks, and they will continue to do so. I think where this all leads to is an opportunity to actually push creativity forward. So if AI is capable to generate images at a rate and speed impossible to match by any humans, maybe what it could give them is time the time and space to foster new inspirations and generate new ideas to direct the AI's powers. By automating the processes of generating multitudes of design leads through mashing together references and creating numerous tweaks and options for colors and material variations, of creating faithful renders, while at the same time challenging designers to discover and develop more uncommon and original references instead of sticking to the same overused prompts or perhaps focus on the physical interpretation of AI sketches, to start thinking more about innovation and improving function, which I think fashion often ignores to a larger degree than other design disciplines. And yet with that, we can easily push past an AI, which does not really understand function. It currently perceives its renders of a shoe, for example, as a simple 2D image because it knows what a shoe looks like, but does not understand the context of what a shoe does. As John from Design Ideas puts it, you can't design for human motivation and needs if you don't know what those are. I've been asking myself a lot lately what humans have to bring to the table in the age of AI. I've picked up oil painting as a hobby recently and as I learn more and more about different techniques and become more aware of how masters old and new construct their work, I am struck by the power of the human gesture. There might be something that is easily reproducible on a screen by a program but I'm not sure it is in real life. When you're looking at a great painting, there is power and emotion in each stroke. And it made me think that this is perhaps where value in fashion, and especially in luxury fashion, will be found in the future, in a sort of return to a more traditional approach and to craftsmanship. But now I have a feeling it will have more to do with a sort of fusion and with how machines can be stirred to push traditional skills further. Design expression and innovation could thrive in metaphor, in imagination, in technique and technology, or in the advancement of material science for performance and sustainability, in pattern cutting. Maybe useful novelty can come from using machines to achieve zero waste through 3D printing, or with the help of AI overcoming the pattern limitations of existing weaving and knitting technologies. I really like the statement from another AI image generating engine called Hotpot AI. We see AI more as augmented intelligence than artificial intelligence, technology that augments people. Someday researchers may invent general intelligence and displace humans, but that day is neither today nor tomorrow. You know, if I'm honest, 
Lately, I'd fallen out of love with fashion a little bit. I just didn't have the same passion for fashion, watching the same designers, rotate between the same brands, merchandising collections to death to the point where you can't tell one designer purse from the next because they were all created to have the same maximum mass appeal, where speed and cost trump craftsmanship. Fashion becoming more about garnering a following than expressing a genuine identity. It just didn't excite me anymore. But now I'm excited because we might have a chance to reevaluate what creativity and expression mean. In their own words, the creators of DALI OpenAI's mission is to ensure that artificial general intelligence, or AGI, by which we mean highly autonomous systems that outperform humans at most economically valuable work, benefit all of humanity. So what we do with AI and how we manage creativity is entirely up to us. How we push ideas forward and how we use tools to do this is entirely up to us. How we use and push past limitations, how we define and value creativity when it comes to the applied arts, that is up to us. Earlier today I picked up this big book on psychology at Oxfam and it says about creativity that most definitions of creativity focus on the products of creative activity. From this perspective, we can define creativity as the ability to produce outcomes that are novel as well as useful and valuable. This is a definition from 1983 and I think it's fascinating how it relates to many of the points in this video. What would we consider novel in the near future? What would be useful and how would we assign value to creative work done by humans or computers? I think that in the near future, AI will be more than capable to take over design jobs as we know them now. My original conclusion for the video had a lot of pathos. It was very, very positive. And then I got reminded about the Zeitgeist movies. Remember those? Um, they came out in the dawn of streaming and became immediately viral as I suppose any piece of brilliant propaganda would given that type of technology. I don't want to spend too much time on what they're all about, but as a brief summary, parts one and two take you on a journey through time and space, starting with the origins of Christianity, passing through the unfair principles guiding the current monetary system, to end up at a utopian vision of a future where technology could help people build a society where friendliness, sustainability and abundance are the driving principles. And no one has to do work they don't enjoy with the sole purpose of earning money because those tasks will be taken up by machines. But the practical truth is that we cannot have nice things and utopias rarely work out as designed. So aside from all the risks that AI poses, and here I'm not a specialist, you can find way more qualified sources to talk about that, it is really up to us to use this potential in our favor. And to be honest, we as humans have not had the best track record in that regard. I really think AI would not be stealing jobs, but jobs will change. Call it ironic or hopeful, but as the world's first public driverless bus launches in Scotland, it still has two people working the service, and that is one human more than before. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Is AI good or evil? Is it out to steal our jobs and will it succeed? Comment below. Obviously, you can support me and the idea behind this channel by liking, subscribing, ringing the bell, and all those easy and familiar actions that help others discover this content and grow a community. Thank you for being here, keep up the good work, and goodbye.